Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kelly Anderson, and I would like to welcome all of you to ISS Group's Business Process Improvement Demonstration titled Easily Control Maverick Spend. In this short 30-minute presentation, my colleague Mike Markowitz will demonstrate how our process digitization methodology, along with our business process improvement solutions, can significantly improve your company's ability to track spend, budgets, and projects using our iPurchase solution. One of our clients, AF Global, formerly Ameriforge, uses our process digitization methodology to transform their entire purchase order requisition process from order entry to management approvals to PO creations, along with our business process improvement solution, iPurchase. To quote their purchasing manager, quote, we have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars using ISS Group's solution. We have an efficient, scalable, and maintainable approval workflow solution. After much research locating an educated partner, ISS Group's knowledge on controlling Maverick spend was second to none, unquote. So as you are all aware in today's uh, competitive environment, businesses must think of purchasing and procurement activities in terms of value, efficiency, and overall return on your investment. Mike will now demonstrate how I purchase as a fast and effective way to improve your uh, financial controls and business processes. Again, welcome to our weekly webinar. With that, I'll pass the controls over to Mike to begin the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly, for the introduction to our weekly webinars or our demonstrations. Today we will be going over the iPurchase solution from ISS Group. Before we start the demonstration, though, I'm just going to bring up a document with the agenda on it. This document gives us a list of how and what we are going to see within the iPurchase solution. So we're going to start with different types of requisitions. We're going to discuss approvals. We're going to discuss how to search requisitions, PO creations, and then purchasing analytics, the metrics and the graphings that are built into the system. So on that note, let's begin the demonstration. So this is the iPurchase login screen. Um, I'm going to just log into the system as Frank. And what we end up in is we end up in the requisition inquiry screen. But what we're going to do is first we're going to discuss different types of requisitions. So iPurchase has the ability to do three different types of requisition, punch up, catalog, and a manual requisition. So I'm going to first discuss punch outs. And what a punch out is, is the ability for a user of a, a user of iPurchase to punch out to a supplier's website. Once they punch out to the supplier website, they can then pick and choose from their cart what they would like, pick and choose from the items that are in their list. Now, once you are in the supplier's website, you are signed in as a user of your organization. So that means that you will have your contract pricing already on all the screens within that supplier. This will give the user the ability to not make mistakes based on price. So you can see already how this will streamline the process. Second, what it allows you to do is, is once you put all your items in your cart and when you check out, instead of checking out, you actually get transferred back into, into iPurchase, and then you will start the approval process. And I will show you what the approval process is once we get there. The second type of um, requisition in iPurchase is catalog. And what a catalog is, is that sometimes your suppliers don't have the ability to do punch outs, but they do have electronic catalogs. So what this allows you to do is import a catalog. And once you import a catalog, and go through the different segment, family, class, and commodities, which will then bring up specific items based on all of the criteria in these, four, in these four fields. Then you could add items to the cart and check out again. And once you check out, it creates the requisition you might purchase. 
and the approval process begins. So that's two of the ways a requisition can be created in iPurchase. Now, there's a lot more information for these two types of requisitions, and if you would like any more information about these, I can have Kelly contact you, or please contact Kelly, and we will then do a private demonstration for you based on these two pieces of functionality. The third way to create a requisition is by creating it manually, and that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on New Rec. And what you'll see here now is, is we're in the requisition workbench, and this is the header information for a requisition. So I'm going to pick a supplier, and as you notice, I type in the three letters, up to three letters, and it automatically goes out and connects with your, or talks to your QAD system and pulls all the supplier information for that supplier and places it in these fields on the left-hand side. Now, not only can I search with a supplier name, I can also search with a supplier number. So I can do this either way. So this gives you um, um, much needed flexibility with how to search for your suppliers. Also, it again uh, makes it almost mistake free because now the user doesn't have to go and put the supplier number in, the phone numbers, the email addresses, who the contact is, if there are any payment terms, the supplier address, all that will automatically gets filled with you, which streamlines processes and again will save you time and money. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do an expense rec. I can do or any, I can add any types of uh, requisitions I want to this field. We're going to keep it at expense, and I'm just going to change this to bread for the buyer. And I'm going to click save, and once I click save now, you'll notice that on behalf of Fieldman and the deliverer to fill in. Since I didn't fill them in before I click save, it puts mine or the person I'm signed in's name in these three fields. Now, what happened is I got now these four buttons that go across the middle of the page here. So all I'm going to do is add a new item, and again, I can do a search, and this is again looking into your QAD item master table and picking up what is coming up through the search criteria. So I'm just going to pick this power cord. I'm going to change the quantity to 1,000, and I'm going to change the cost to 100, okay? And I'm going to click Save and Close. And when I click Save and Close, you'll see the line was created on the bottom. It tells me the quantity, the account, sub-account, the department, the due date, the cost, and the, or, and the total cost, or the extended cost first, and then the total cost on the bottom. The more lines I have, obviously the total cost will change. Now, what happens here is that I now have an approval history and a simulation going on. Now, I haven't submitted this yet, but I have a simulation. But we are going to submit the rec. So let's submit this rec first. And now that I've submitted it, the fields all gray out. Now I can't change anything, but I can still go into the approval history here, and I can I could see that the requisition is now in the pending state. So now let's discuss this approval routing. So as you can see, these approvers have been added to the approval routing, and both the R&D director and the senior director have been notified that they need to approve this requisition. Since they are both level 100, that is the reason why they were both notified. Now, as you can see, it goes from level 100 to 300, then to 900, and then to 930, okay? The notifications go out based on the, le uh, the order of the levels. So the level 300, the vice president and the senior director will not get notified until both level 100s have been have approved the requisition. 
So, again, you, you can see how this streamlines the processes within your business because you'll, you get an email notification and you can approve this rec right from the email notification. So, it saves so much time than actually having to place a piece of paper on someone's desk and hoping that that paper doesn't get lost before the requisition actually gets approved and a PO is created. You can also see how this saves time because it is an automated system now. And this automated system sends out notifications and allows the users or the approvers to approve this with little effort, which makes everything run much more smoothly within your organization. So let's discuss these different um, levels and these approvers. So first, like I said, you have different levels of approvals, and this and the approval um, routing will go through these levels of approval of, of approvers. The next thing I want, so as I discussed also, let both these level 100 use, uh, approvers have to approve the rec before it moves on. But you can also do a group approval. And what that means is, as you can see here on level 930, that this is a group. And what this is telling me that only one person in this group has to approve this requisition. The difference between level 100 and 930 is only one person, in, like I said, in, in the finance group has to approve, where both people at, at level 100 have to approve in order for this rep to move on to level 300. The other thing I want to um, discuss is this little boat. And what this boat means is that Alex Chen is out of office. And since Alex Chen is out of office, he set his out of office and delegated it to Bill Comst. So now all the notifications for Alex will go to Bill now, and Bill will also have to approve any requisition that is in Alex's um, queue, approval queue. Now, Alex set this before he left, and he chose Bill as his delegate. He could have chosen other approvers, but he's the one where that, the user who, who is going out of office is the one who has to choose the delegate for who will approve the refs moving forward until they return back into the office. Okay, so now let's discuss an email notification. So, since we just submitted this requisition, I got this, I received this email. This email, let me make it a little bigger for you, shows the requisitions, the, all the header information on the top of the requisition, the total cost of the requisition, the status of the requisition. It also tells me what master comments were on the requisition, the line item, and where we are in the approval process. Now, you'll see that the first two levels have not been approved or anything yet. As I go through, as people start approving, it will tell me that, that they have approved the rec and time and date of when it was approved. And this will move all the way through until the last person approves the requisition, and then a PO will be created. Also within this email, you can view the rec, you can approve the rec right from this email, and you can reject the requisition right from this email. So again, you can see how I purchase can streamline your approval process for requisitions. Let's move on, and let's get to now we are going to, let's approve this requisition, okay? So instead of me having to go through sign out and sign in and sign out and sign in, I'm going to what we call emergency approval. And what emergency approval allows you to do is it allows a user to approve a requisition for everyone in case of emergency. So say, 
something breaks in your plant and you need the part tomorrow and it's on a Saturday. Well, maybe not everyone can is checking their phones to approve wax. So a, a user can emergency approve a requisition. This functionality is only available if you are in a specific setting within um, iPurchase. So let's emergency approve this. Click OK. And, and what you'll say, oh, there's line items on this. Uh, iPurchase also has the ability to do line approvals. And how you do line approvals is, is you see this little yellow circle here. This little yellow circle tells me that this line is pending. So I can actually, if I had multiple lines, approve certain lines and reject other lines. So I'm going to approve this line and then force approve the requisition. Okay. And if I go back now to approval history, you'll see that everybody has approved the requisition. And what you'll see now is I have my PO receipt tab. And if I go back to the header information, my PO was created. So let's talk about PO creation for a second. PO automatically gets created after the last approver approves the requisition. Now, again, this is a system setting with an iPurchase, and it doesn't have to be an automated process. But when you make it an automated process, once again, you're saving time. And you're removing the human error from the requisition process, which allows you to save money and creation of POs that are automatically sent from the suppliers. So right from this requisition, I can look at the PO. So here's my PO. I click on the shopping cart here. It gives me my line items, how many were received, how many were returned, how many were invoiced. What also is here is I can show receipts. We don't have any receipts for this PO, obviously. I can print the PO right from here, and I can PO archive this purchase order. Also, what this is telling me is, is that this purchase order is still open. If I want, I can close this PO right from my purchase. So since I purchase and QAD are integrated, I can close the PO and I purchase and it will close the PO in QAD, which again saves you time, saves you money, and also reduces human error. So let's um, let's go back to the um, to the requisition for a second here, and what you'll see here is is I have a yellow ball and I have a check mark here. Now what the yellow ball is telling me is that the PO is open. What the check mark is is a confirmation status, and let me explain this. When you have a PO sent to a supplier, you can have a link on the PO for confirmation. What this does is this allows the supplier to click the link and tell by purchase that the PO has been received. When they click on that link and they, com and they confirm that, this check mark becomes green. And then anyone that has access to this requisition knows that the supplier received the requisition. Uh, the purchase order, sorry. And the last thing I want to discuss is PO is requisition inquiry here. So if I go into requisition inquiry, I can show what show me all so right now I'm showing as Frank is the approver on what Rex on the RECs in the pending status. So, these, so Frank has to approve these two RECs. Now if I remove the filter here, you'll notice I can see all RECs. Now this is, again is a security setting within iPurchase, and not everyone ha can have the ability to see all RECs. 
on the top, you can see these are the fields that I can use to sort out what recs I want to see. So I can pick, I just want to see all approved recs. Or what uh, I want to say recs that have not yet been submitted. Or I want to say all recs that Frank is the originator. Okay, so I can click show recs and it will show me all recs that Frank is the originator. I can also create views. So if you have views that you've, uh, you've used in the past and you use them often, I can create lots like the all HR request. So this is all HR request. I can do CDW pending recs. So these are all recs that the supplier equals CDW. So you can see the flexibility of how the system will work and how easy it will be to search for requisitions. Now, the last thing that I want to show is the graphing and metrics. The way graphing and metrics works is, is based on the criteria in your search. So if I remove filter and I hit graph, it's going to show me a graph of all the reps in the system. And these are drill downable. So if I hear I see CDW as a supplier, I click on the supplier, and now it's grouped by buyer. If I click on Wolf this card Wolf this, then it's grouped by department. I can do the 2000 department, now it's grouped by rep type, and this will keep changing. And I can just jump. I don't have to drill down if I want. If I click on expense rep, now it's grouped by originator, and it keeps moving. Okay, and it keeps going and going and going. This is based on what I am using as my search criteria. So now let's, if I, re, oops, sorry, if I remove the filter again, and let's say that I do approve of Frank, and I do pending, and I hit show refs, I'm back to the two. If I hit the graph, it's going to give me a big graph here. So you can see that the graphing and the metrics works based on the search criteria. I purchase also comes with a metric section. So this metric section I'm running now on all requisitions that are in the system. So you can see it has activity by originator, approval activity by summary. I can do activity summary summary by originator, rejection code, analysis and cycle time by month. So you can see you can pick up a lot of information from these screens about if something is, if I purchase, if requisitions are being approved in a timely manner, if they're not, who's, make, who's originating the requisitions, um, how long it takes for it to be approved or rejected based on user. All of this comes out of the box. And every one of these boxes can be exported to Excel. So on that note, I'm going to pass this back to Kelly and just realize that this was a 30,000 foot overview of iPurchase. There's a lot more function and detail within the system. And I can, we can, me and Kelly can both do personal demonstrations for anyone who wants more information about the iPurchase system. And on that note, again, I'm going to pass it back to Kelly for some closing remarks. Great. Thanks, Mike. A nice job on the demonstration. As you um, noticed and um, was clearly shown that I purchase I can eliminate your company's Maverick spend. Um, all vendors are approved, pre-approved, and they're pulled from your ERP system. Pricing is your contract pricing, um, and you can lock it down so it's not overridden, it, and that is pulled from your ERP system. Um, so you've got strict c controls that um, that you can put in place um, that will help eliminate any rogue spend. And then even through the approval process, POs must be approved based on your company's um, approval structure before it can be released to your vendor. So I think he, Mike did a great job showing you how our iPurchase um, can uh, easily control your company's Maverick spend. So I'd like to thank you all for joining this week's uh, webinar, weekly, weekly webinar. We hope that you attend um, weekly webinars in the future with us. Please feel free to contact me or anyone um, with ISS Group. I can be reached at kanderson at issgroup.net or um, 
anybody can be reached through our website at www.issgroup.com or give me a call or send me a text message at 267-234-4737. And again, as Mike stated, uh, we would um, welcome any type of personal demonstration that you and your company may like to see uh, for any of our solutions. So thank you guys. Everybody have a great week, and we look forward to uh, seeing you next week with us. Yes, thanks, Kelly, and thank you, for everyone, for attending. Have a great day.